Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and I'm really excited to have back my good friend and chef Eric Gephardt with Kamado Joe here at All Things Barbecue. What are we cooking up today? Today we got one of my favorites. It is a chocolate cherry duck. Let's get into the action. Duck, one of my absolute favorite proteins. And I feel like it's very approachable, but people often shy away from it. Let me show you how easy it is. First thing we need to do is get this grill started. Today we're gonna to be using the Kamada Joe Classic 3, one of my favorite grills. Now we're gonna stabilize our grill at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but interestingly enough, on this cook, we're gonna put our accessory on and utilize the heat of the grill coming to temperature to begin rendering out our duck. First thing we need to do is get charcoal in the grill and get it lit. Notice how we've got some charcoal from a previous cook. We're just gonna use our ash tool and let the dust on the outside fall down through those grates. And now we've got usable charcoal, but let's add some new charcoal. And that's fantastic. And just as you've seen before, we're gonna bank this charcoal to one side in order to give ourselves a stack and then we're gonna light our fire starter. We'll light our fire starter and put it at the bottom of the stack so that the flame has access to all the fuel source. Remember that draft door on the bottom is all the way open. We'll build ourselves a little charcoal cave here. Our fire is started now. Let's go ahead and add the cast iron griddle. Like I mentioned before, we're gonna utilize the heat of the grill as it's coming to temperature to slowly begin to render out that fat. So let's head on back over to the table and do some light fabrication. Two beautiful duck breasts here. Notice you've got the fat cap with a large amount of fat underneath it. Then we look at the bottom side, we've got a little tenderloin here gorgeous dark meat. These are two prime specimens of duck breast. Uh, you can get these at your local grocery store, fresh or frozen. Let's go ahead and start by scoring the cap. And we don't want to cut into the meat here. We just want to help promote the rendering of that fat cap underneath the skin. This will give us crispier skin and a really nice bite. So both breasts scored just like this. And let me bend it so you can see how deep we are. Notice I'm just going all the way through the fat, not to the meat itself. If you do cut into the meat, it's A-OK. -okay. It's just cooking. There's no real rules here. Perfect. Now let's get them seasoned up. Just a simple salt and pepper. Salt's going to help pull out some of that moisture. And pepper's going to give us just that traditional flavor profile we're looking for in that gorgeous crust. Go ahead and get the other side while we're at it. Little salt, little pepper. Now back over to the grill. Cast iron griddle is still cool to the touch and that's what we want. We're gonna go scored fat cap side down, no oil. You know, if we seared this duck at this point, it would lock in that fat. We wanna promote gentle and gradual rendering. So as the grill is coming to temperature, so too is the cast iron griddle. And we're gonna start to see this rendering effect happen. We're gonna let this happen for about eight to 12 minutes, and then we're gonna flip. 90% of the cooking is done skin side down. While the grill is coming to temperature and the duck skin and fat are beginning to render, let's go ahead and sneak in a grill grate at the lowest setting on the divide and conquer system. This is gonna be the beginning of our sauce. I've got a cast iron skillet with some ancho chilies, dried ancho chilies, and we're gonna reconstitute them with a little bit of chicken stock. In a few minutes, we'll see that stock come to a simmer, and we want these beautiful chilies just to soften up. In order to control our temperature climb, I'm gonna go ahead and shut that dome and begin to open the control tower and damper down the draft door. Remember, we're looking for that 400 degree Fahrenheit. This gradually raising to 400 Fahrenheit is exactly what we want on this pan. Notice we're getting some good rendering. I'm starting to see some nice bubbles around the outside. It's beginning to plump up a little bit. Beautiful things are happening and we're just approaching that 400 degree Fahrenheit. So you can see we're already coming to a simmer here. This is starting to reconstitute nice. The flavor profile from these chilies and that chicken stock is gonna be the great base 
for the cherry and chocolate sauce we're looking for. Let's give it another three minutes or so. That puts simmering these at about seven minutes. Oh yeah. Look at that. And all we had to do was leave it alone, right? So now we're gonna flip. Beautiful. And we'll sear that other side. Our grill has come to a temperature of 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Beautifully rendered and crisp skin. We'll sear that other side. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our chilies and chicken stock and blend those up to begin the sauce. The chocolate cherry sauce is super simple. We're gonna use these anchos that we've reconstituted in the chicken stock. We're gonna go for some of this gorgeous habanero cherry jam, and then we're gonna whip in some of our amazing bittersweet chocolate all in the blender. Then we'll strain it back into the original container to keep it warm until we're ready to use. First thing we're gonna do is discard these stems. Don't worry about the seeds. That's the reason we're gonna strain this out in the end, but I don't wanna blend up those stems. So just pull those right off. Okay, now we go into the blender. Next, we'll go in with some of our haba cherry. And let's go ahead and blend that up and see what the viscosity or thickness looks like. Now while it's still warm, let's start dropping our chunks of chocolate right in. And I'll wait for it to blitz up and melt and then drop the next piece in. Last piece. Let's take a look. I feel like it's a little too thick now that that chocolate is in there. So this smells incredible, but it does look a bit thick. So I'm gonna put it on the blender stand and just blend in a little bit more chicken stock to get, to get to the thickness that we're looking for. All right, let's strain it to get out some of those seeds. And that is exactly what we want. And because this pan is still warm, it's gonna keep our sauce warm. Yes, yeah, this is almost like a quick mole. Love that flavor profile. Look at that, stunning. Duck's slightly firmer, but still nice and soft, which tells us it's gonna be that beautiful medium rare. Let's go ahead and pull it and let it rest on the cutting board. These duck breasts are sensational. Um, just still really juicy and plump. Let's slice on a slight bias. You want it about a quarter of an inch thick. Any thinner, it's gonna cool down a little fast for you. Oh yeah. Let me show you what we're, what we're working with here. It's stunning. I'll tell you, duck is just super simple. Give that a little shingle. Now let's work on our plate design a little bit. And that, is exactly sauce consistency, okay? We're gonna take this paintbrush and draw all from one corner to the other. And the duck will go right on top of that. When thinking about presentation, you can always deconstruct the dish a little bit. So we know there's cherries and that's a large component. So just placing some cherries around the outside will sort of instill what's happening here. Uh, we're also going to put some chocolate on there just to, again, help tell that story. So I'll chop up a little piece of the bittersweet chocolate we used and just kind of sprinkle that randomly around. And last but not least, it's very sea of same. So I need something vibrant. I need something green. Even just a bit of chopped parsley will work for that. Chef Tom, come take a look at this. Cheers. A little extra sauce? You want a little dip? Yeah. Be prepared. Right? Oh yeah, it's got some heat. Great salt. 
to complement the sweet. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like the crunch of the skin on a duck breast. No, it's fantastic. And, you know, 80 to 90% of that cook is done skin down, started from cold, bringing to a render, crisping up. I just wish more people would do duck at home because it's just super delicious, very approachable. Well, thanks to Chef Eric and thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see us cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.